Hello and welcome to Ivy Times TV. I'm Marisa Christian. Today I'm joined by freelance reporter Daria Solovyova to talk about the recent crisis in Egypt and the U.S. response to this. Egypt has experienced weeks of protests and negotiations, but on Wednesday things turned deadly as the violence increased. Can you explain what happened on Wednesday when the military tried to disperse, you know, two major sit-ins and a few several smaller protests in support of ousted President Mohamed Morsi? Um, hi, Marisa. Well, actually, Wednesday has been the worst uh, day of violence since 2011, since the revolution began. So over 600 people died, and uh, there are estimates and human rights groups who are reporting that actually the numbers are much higher, and we're still getting reports. Um, and today, the Muslim Brotherhood has called for more protests and retaliation of the violence. So the clashes are ongoing in Cairo and across Egypt today. Um, what happened in the two days since the military dispersed the crowds on Wednesday, and how has the violence continued to play out? So on Thursday, the, the next day before, the main uh, more, the main mosque in uh, Rabas um, Mosque was turned into a morgue. So there were hundreds of dead who were actually could not be buried and were treated. And in the heat, they were treated with the ice bags, and uh, families tried to preserve them as much as possible to prepare them for the burial. Um, and so this, uh, most of the kind of the, the coverage and what's been going on has been focused on, on that. Today, uh, the military has authorized um, the crackdown on the protests against, against the Muslim Brotherhood and the Morsi protesters all around Cairo. Um, so they stepped out and they have a few more hours left before the curfew is in place. So they've already been, uh, the troops have been out in the streets in, in Egypt since the beginning of the day, and they're now in all the major streets in Cairo, cracking down again on the violence. Now, it seems like we've been using the terms pro-Morsi and Muslim Brotherhood interchangeably when we're talking about the people attending these protests. Who really is there on the ground fighting for this? Well, they're, they're calling themselves the anti-coup coalition, so it's actually a few of the groups, and Muslim Brotherhood is the largest one of them. But a lot of the people are not necessarily supporting Morsi or supporting the Muslim Brotherhood exclusively. Um, a lot of the people I talk to say that he hasn't been given a chance. He has, in turn, been able to serve the full term. Um, and so they have a different set of uh, values and reasons of why they're out in the streets supporting it. A lot of them are against the military and the return to the police state, of what they perceive as a police state, before Mubarak. And what they're seeing now in the streets with the return of the curfew, with the, with the return of the, um, the, the, of the military measures, security measures that have been in place now as a throwback to before the January 11th revolution. Because of, of this ongoing crackdown operation of the military, because they enjoy huge support and popularity of the people, that they have a carte blanche virtually several times people have poured in the streets to show their support for the military. So they don't think it's necessary, even with the condemnation from a lot of international powers. The military has right now the popular support that it needs to continue these operations until they think that the security is restored, and that's what's going on right now. What role, if any, do you think the visit John McCain and Lindsey Graham played about a month ago when they asked the interim government to release the Brotherhood leaders? Do you think that had any effect on the major crackdown this week? Well, there's uh, over the past year since uh, the ouster of Morsi, there has been of Mohammed, President Mohammed Morsi. There has been really uh, a confusion about the U.S. policy and also a rise of anti-Americanism. So it has contributed to because uh, Mohammed uh, President uh, Senator John McCain actually uh, be, um, made a step it devi deviated from the U.S. official U.S. position. And he called it a coup, which the U.S. Uh, administration, or the Obama administration, went through uh, big trouble to not call it a coup. So it confused a lot of people and actually angered a lot of people um, by calling it that. Now, I know the Obama administration strongly condemned um, the steps taken by Egypt's interim government. What has the response been to the White House's comments, and what effect will this have on America's relationship with Egypt? Uh, well, again, uh, the American administration, the Obama administration, is deeply unpopular. There is a, a widespread perception of, of meddling, of interfering by both parties. So, as I, as I talk about in the article, there is, a, there is 
U.S. almost can't win because every every party is accusing them of siding with the other. There is a wide perception of siding with the Muslim Brotherhood and U.S. Ambassador Ann Patterson supporting the Muslim Brotherhood when she was just meeting with them to continue the relations, to continue the communication channels. So she was widely vilified for that. So the response has been that it's too little and it won't really change because the, of the U.S. tie in deep relationship with Egypt and its strategic importance in the region. So it's a, it's not likely to impact financially um, the relationship very much. And again, as I, as I mentioned in the article, the 1.3 billion has already been d distributed for the 2013. So the the difference, the revision of the Obama stance is more symbolic uh, than substantial. Um, what is the next step for the Muslim Brotherhood? Uh, the next step is uh, it's you know it's a history that's being written in the streets of Egypt right now because they're fighting for survival. They're a group that has been in power for 80 years, has been in existence for 80 years, um, and they've been the first democratically elected Muslim. Um, Mohammed Morsi is the first democratically elected president. So they're fighting for survival in the streets. And as some of the people that I've talked to, they're saying that there will be no Muslim Brotherhood. Of after two three days, so this is an ongoing military operation to not just uh, remove their leaders from power, but really neuter um, and remove them from public life. What you don't see in Egypt right now is really a discussion of how to involve the Muslim Brotherhood in the public life, and that's one of the major points: is that there is no so, sort of consensus, and every time you have an escalation of violence, it becomes more and more difficult and the, the discourse and the people in the political parties become more and more polarized. Now, you are currently in Egypt, and I know you've written extensively about the country. What's it like being there, on the ground there, or what's it like as a female journalist trying to cover the area? Well, for journalists, it has become increasingly difficult. There was an epidemic of sexual harassment that I've uh, reported on for Ivy Times as well. On, uh, on uh, throughout the month of August, it has been the highest instance throughout the month of July. Uh, since June 30th, we have seen a higher incidence of violent attacks against women, sexualist violence attacks. Um, and over the last week, since, uh, since August 14th, we've had uh, three journalists have been killed, uh, including a Sky News reporter. Um, and so there is a lack of protection, and now also the military is instating new requirements for journalists to operate in Egypt. So there, there is this um, concerns, a lot of concerns about the safety of journalists, men and women, to operate safely in Egypt. Well, thank you, Daria. We will be following this closely. Thanks for speaking to us from Egypt. Of course. Good to speak to you.